All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Lagba Omer. I hope you're doing very well. Um, going to learn a Rashi with you from Aparshas Bahar from the fifth Aliyah, uh, which is uh, our Aliyah today. It's a beautiful Rashi, uh, a very important Rashi, a simple one, but uh, one that's always worth looking at again. Uh, Torah describes in multiple places in this Parsha, someone who faces very difficult life circumstance. Uh, when a person becomes impoverished, when a person has to sell themselves into slavery, when a person has to give up their ancestral land in order to pay off a debt, these are very difficult circumstances. And the Torah here, um, at the end of the section of Shemitah and Yovel and Geulas Karka, finally comes to another prohibition, which is not to take advantage of people in general who are in these difficult financial predicaments, right? The whole Parsha was generally about that, touching on that, Shemitah and Yovel has a lot to do with that. But then going beyond Shemitah and Yovel, the Torah turns to the prohibition of Neshach and Ribis, of not taking advantage of a person, of not charging the person interest, of not hitting a person when they're down financially. The intro statement to that pasuk is very telling. When your, your brother, your neighbor, your friend becomes uh, impoverished in some way, in distress in some way, his hand is faltering. It's such an incredible image, description that Torah, the Torah gives for a person in trouble, for a person who's vulnerable. Their hands are faltering. Their hands are falling. It's such a beautiful image because the counter image that we have of help, when you give a person help, you reach out a hand, you give them a hand. Even in English, the, you know, the, the saying goes, you give someone a hand is, is what you say in order to convey that you're trying to help someone out. Why do you give someone a hand? Because the description of a person who's vulnerable and suffering is a person whose hand is faltering. So the opposite is to give them a hand, right? That's where it comes from. Umata yado, his hands are faltering. Imach, with you. If that's true, you should strengthen him, no matter who it is, Ger or Toshav, Vachai Imach, so that he can live alongside you. You don't even need the Rashi. The Pasuk is just so beautiful. The Pasuk is clearly conveying that it's our responsibility to help people, to strengthen them, to give them the strength that they've lost as their hands and their legs and their bodies are faltering. And ultimately, it gives us the goal as well, which is Vachai Imach, not to be lording over them with our help, with our chesed, not to be the ones who are entitled and privileged and, and able to help others who are below us, but rather to raise someone up, to give them strength to rise on their own, and live alongside us as equals, as parallel, not feeling beholding to us, not feeling lower than us, not feeling less than us. It's an incredible statement about the nature of chesed in general, beyond these particular prohibitions of ribis, of interest, of these other things. This is just a classic statement of Jewish belief in the way we help people. But there's an added layer that Rashi adds based on an insight in this pasuk. You should strengthen him. What does that mean? hayad. So what the Pasuk is trying to tell us is that you should go and help the person before they, before they fall too low. Don't let them fall so low that it'll be difficult for them to rise up. It'll be difficult to raise them up. When their hands just start to falter, before they reach the ground, before they fall, before they collapse, when they're only just faltering at the very beginning, that's the point which the Pasuk is telling us. You have to be a chazaktabo. You have to strengthen them and hold them and help them. You never want a person to reach so low that it's very hard for them to get up. We should see people for who they are. We should see people and their troubles at the beginning so we can lend them a hand and they never fall to begin with. It's like an animal with a load on its back. If it's starting to falter, one person can just push it a little bit and the animal along with the person can stand up. And be fine. But when that animal falls to the ground under the weight of their load, even five people will not be able to lift them up. Once a person hits rock bottom, it's very hard for them to ever get up again. 
So we should have the strength to be able to see people and we should have the strength when we're in these situations to share our difficulties with others, to unburden ourselves in that way. So a person could have the opportunity to help us while we're still faltering before we fall too low. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day. Happy, happy Lagba Omer. Be well. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.